well after the near drought of May. The sound of these water butts filling up over the last 48 hours has been music to my ears and to many gardeners around England. Having a bit of wet is going to make all the difference. This spearmint is one example that really likes a bit of moisture around its roots and just look how well that is growing with a bit of rain. It's growing through this horseradish which we allow to grow in this bit of the vegetable garden. There's a self-seeded bronze fennel coming up there. You'll see later we've got these all over the place. And what isn't particularly enjoying it this year is the peppermint. Normally we'd be picking this very frequently this time of year but it's just not thriving here now. I'm just wondering if it's getting a bit sad from being planted in the same place now for about three or four years. Like most mints it tends to exhaust the soil nutrients pretty quickly and want to spread out and I don't think the chip bark that we put down on here to suppress the weeds has done it any favours either. These globe artichoke plants are really thriving here. I think we've actually only got three globe artichokes. The huge great things are either cardoons or ornamental that were sold as globe artichokes. They're producing masses of beautiful growth and we're going to leave them here just for the architectural splendour of the plants. But this is what we really wanted to be growing. You see we've got a good crop of black fly around these. Just wait for the ladybirds to come in. Shouldn't ruin that crop at all. These are the covers we used for the forced rhubarb earlier in the season. And this is what happens if you leave them on slightly too long. Middle of May is about the last period you can leave these on, otherwise it just gets far too hot under the covers and the rhubarb goes soft and fleshy and rots away. But the plant's growing back and that will recover perfectly well. These foxgloves in the corner of the old vegetable garden are flowering beautifully and the bees are absolutely making the most of them. Roganberries and Tabor, as we showed you last week, are growing away nicely. Again, enjoying the moisture. Taborers are really starting to ripen up now. The first of these we're going to sacrifice to the birds. They'll get sick of them quite soon and there's plenty more coming on. We'll start harvesting a few as they ripen up to this stage. Easiest way when there's not too many to deal with, if they're too sour to eat fresh, is to just pop them straight into the freezer. The perennial rocket's been harvested now for a couple of weeks. It starts in early May. We have to protect these from pigeons, otherwise they just strip the plants. But a couple of these will give you fresh pit rocket leaf throughout the summer, right the way through to the first frosts. These plants have been here now for several years. They overwinter and regrow, sometimes from almost underground each year. The potato crop took a real knocking from late frosts in May. Add to that the drought that we've had and they've really suffered. It's probably going to knock back the cropping of these new potatoes by at least four weeks. But they should come on now. I need to get in here and start doing some weeding. These red onions really will benefit from the moisture need to keep those growing strongly now. As soon as the tops dry off, if it gets too dry, they'll stop growing and that'll be it. A row of parsnips that we've thinned out should be good. Haven't grown parsnips in this garden for a couple of years. My ongoing disaster is these two rows of peas. The pigeons have been just decimating them. Every time they get growing, they get their heads through this wire mesh and just pick away at the pea shoots. I doubt I'm going to get a crop off any of this, to be honest. The runner beans we sowed directly at the base of these canes are starting to come up now. They're going to be later than most people's, but I prefer to grow them directly into the soil rather than trying to transplant them. They seem to do okay. I'm trying climbing French beans on one side of this frame and traditional runners on the other. We'll see if it works later in the season. These self-seeded verbascum have been found by these little fellas who are going to strip this plant and grow incredibly fast over the next few days. 
The Paul's Himalayan musk is still heavy in the apple tree over the fruit cage. It's going to make it very difficult to actually net this soft fruit this year. Gooseberries are getting so heavy now that the branches are being weighed down by the sheer weight of fruit. A large central plant is a red currant. It's fruiting beautifully, but again, it's going to need some net protection, otherwise the birds will strip this. I've made life very difficult for myself here by planting just too much in smaller space. We've got these gooseberries coming right out laterally, making it almost impossible to throw the net over the top of here. Every morning we come out and have a rush of blackbirds and pigeons that have been feasting on these from perches on the ground. The little cutting garden's still looking very good. Peonies have taken a right pounding in the heavy rain. Even had some sleet over the last few days. But some are standing okay. And the foxgloves don't mind it at all. Roses on the back rose arch, on the back boundary of the vegetable garden. Just coming to the end of their first flowering stage now, but still looking good. And the peonies below, under the little bit of shelter they've had there, not looking bad. Star performer when you walk through the gate into this vegetable garden right now is this late flowering Dutch honeysuckle which just fills this end of the garden with a delicious scent. All in all, quite a bit of weeding to do. Won't be able to spend quite so long on those sun lounges as I'd like. But I'm very pleased with the vegetable garden so far this year. We've had some good salad crops out of it and a lot more just coming in to harvest now. All I need to do is concentrate on trying to keep the wildlife off most of it.